News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And very good evening to you and a warm welcome to Newsline Live. Our guest tonight is a person who has um, upheld uh, the rights of minority shareholders and uh, also upheld the needs of the voiceless. Um, he's of course uh, uh, been described as an average decent citizen of Sri Lanka concerned uh, with the uh, economic social well-being of the people and he is of course none other than Mr. KC Vignaraja. Very good evening to you Mr. Vignaraja and thank, thank you, thank you very much. Me. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's an uh, absolute pleasure to be able to welcome you here. Uh, Mr. Vignaraja, in the light of what is um, believed to be a real and serious uh, crisis, the dollar crisis, the unavailability of foreign exchange in our country, I thought I'd ask you how important is it to uh, have a concerted effort not only in identifying rogues uh, who have uh, stolen from the public purse basically uh, but also how important is uh, the whole business of asset recovery other than paying lip, uh, lip service to that thank you I think on your channel you have been very forthright and that's a blessing the MTV also Mr. late Mr. Raju Mahendran carried the uh, flag very well of the people and I think his son, Sashi Rajamandran, is also do doing the same thing. Thanks to you all. Now, for me to add to this, is that getting back the robbed dollars is prime priority, number one priority. Now, you solve most of the problems if you get these robbed dollars back. You have to identify, and everyone, every loyal citizen, and even the foreign friends, uh, the foreign leaders and governments and all, it is in everyone's interest to have a global situation where transactions are clean. And then we will never have this uh, sort of crisis. Of course, Russia and the Chinese dictatorships are totally different cases. They are to be handled separately and we must leave it to the others to s solve. Now, if, in my opinion, just about one-sixth of the robbed uh, dollars are given now itself, we can solve one year's needs of everyone. No one need to be in these queues, die in queues. Fifteen people died in queues. How, how suffering these people have been? You see, to die because you stood in a queue, then people waiting in cars rural can't can't you all have a system sorry when I say you all can't the government have a simple system Ranil Vikram Singh all these people who are champions of this thing they say it's it's a real shame because you can issue like a ration card which I did advise the Sri Mahogan at the time and Dr. N. M. Perra later did a wonderful job so those, those people though leftists they adopted a very good capital system of choice, of free choice, not of your choice of uh, what you want to do. Then what happens is there will be no queues, there will be no, and even now what you should have done you, to spare the people, if you had an ounce of concern for these pe poor people, would be to go and deliver these uh, gas cylinders to their houses. You know what the quota is going to be. Why can't you go and deliver, get, get a decision deliver? Here, old people are taking the uh, gas cylinders and moving like this. Then they are moving left. You see, at my age, at 81, I find a lot of things difficult. My eyesight, my walking, my struggling, that's because of diabetes and so many other related. God has blessed with me, blessed me with a lot of things, right? From uh, what you would call diabetes, uh, anyway, a lot all of things. All sorts of things. All sorts of things. Those are also, you must take it in the correct spirit. Take what I can do 
and then leave it to God. And there are many, many things. And but you, can I interrupt you and ask sure. you, what about your medicines? You know, there's a shortage of petrol, diesel, cooking, uh, gas, um, fertilizer, and also medicine. What about your medicines? Are you getting those um, with some ease or, or not? I don't want to take too much of your time, but my wife had an open heart surgery some time back, and then with the stains, I think she, for a mosquito, you can't get mosquito repellents also so quickly. She scratched it, and that made a little bit of an opening and an ooze. And that continued, and we consulted my daughter, consulted particularly. Mm. She's very, very caring and fond of us. And brought in, and that uh, doctor prescribed uh, 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 a spray. Right. A spray, uh, one, one spray can will last only two days. It costs 4,750 one can. It went up to 7,000. <laughs> and it was very difficult to get also, but we got that. Anyway, we consulted the doctor and said, look, one is, it's, mm -hmm. they think it's too expensive, can you substitute? So we are managing with some substitute, a little bit uh, less uh, this thing, but still it's very expensive. In addition, there are so many other medications. Mm. We find it difficult to get. So, bottom line is, it's difficult to achieve. Now then, you know, I want, I want to talk people to you about... People will die. Other people would have uh, would die by now. Mm. That's that's the sad part of it. You know, when I think of them, I think, my God, we are so blessed. That's it. Thank you. Very sad. Um, Mr. Vignaraja, uh, asset recovery, you know, uh, I suppose it's uh, it flows easy off the tongue asset recovery, but in in practice, you know, uh, if I look if we look at the Philippines yeah. uh, and the Marcos billions, <laughs> they come uh, back. <laughs> it, it's over it's over thirty years. They had a special task force on asset recovery, and after all those years, uh, I believe that uh, they managed to recover. It's still ongoing apparently. They managed to recover one point two billion. Dollars. That's one thousand two hundred million dollars. Um, but after all those years, now Sri Lanka hasn't even started this whole process of uh, asset recovery. Why is that? What is the sort of um, I don't care attitude mm. that successive governments successive have? Why, why is that? All are involved, like uh, MP, uh, former minister, deputy, Iran Vikram said. The system supports them. Why change the system? <laughs> I don't know whether you remember. Yeah. He came on one of your shows. Yeah, indeed. And then I uh, asked him uh, on another meeting elsewhere. He said, you're perfectly right. He told me, I'm perfectly right. But who is to execute it? The system doesn't allow. So you all have to change the constitution. So that's where the constitutional change comes in. Exactly. Unless you do that also simultaneously. We can't wait for that to come and then this to come because that... So it should be a dual track policy? Exactly. Dual track. Perfect. <laughs> you get hold of this. And the, as I said, the Attorney General and the, some judges have been very forthright. Even though appointed by uh, Gotabaya, it doesn't mean that this thing they have upheld the good tradition. I hope they are able to, otherwise these people have all the powers to change them. That should be prevented by the protesters, mm -hmm. by the citizens at large. Then you get them, arrest some of them. This is their crime. Only the president is above, but he can be forced in many ways. At the moment he can't get out of his house or <laughs> enter. So, that can easily be induced. Not only that, he should have the honor to resign. The word using honor in... Uh, but right using this word honor in terms of our politicians in this country is, uh, you know, I don't want to paint Kamas. them all. Inverted uh, commas. Yes. I said but, there are know, some... It's not all the 225, but mm, the majority. Right. In my opinion, about 35 can be tagged as not tainted by all this. Mm -hmm. Probably, add a, any doubters, make it 50. But one thing is fundamental, that everyone 
then you eliminate the, this ele everyone has to have the asset declaration plus an affidavit that they did not do any crime. Mm. Maybe to make it easier for the time being, crime is perpetual. You can go after them at any time. Mm. There's no time bar. But you can limit it to say the last seven years to make it easy. You know, this has to be a very practical way, but done legally. Mm. So you put them also, take them and put, him into, put them into jail, right? Even, uh, even the Attorney General had advised, Mahindra Rajapaksa can be put into jail. Johnston Fernando can be put into jail, right? And put them into jail, don't give them privileges, don't put them into merchant wards, you know, those are again luxuries of these people. Let them eat the normal food than these people, and then they will start coughing up the dollars. A very simple solution. And uh, it's a necessary act. I never like to hurt anyone. In my culture, I have always said, let us try and improve them. But we have come to a crisis where there is no other way. And all the, uh, in my opinion, the, all these MPs, and there are people who have contributed very well to the economy mm. by being, and to the legal uh, process. But isn't it unfair to yeah. those who have contributed to the economy uh, and to the development of our country? Isn't it unfair that some, perhaps a, a small number nevertheless, uh, isn't it unfair that they seem to be getting away with uh, almost blue murder? in the sense that yeah. nobody is going after them. That's a problem. That's why I said eliminate those fellows who can't sign this asset declaration and the affidavit that they didn't. Then the rest, I'm sure, pray to God, <laughs> that they will go after these assets. Because that's a country's absolute need. Would you agree yeah. that these asset declarations shouldn't merely be locked up in some cabinet of the speaker or the um, president, if you're cabinet minister and so on, uh, and shouldn't it be available openly for the public to see, discuss, dissect whenever they feel like it? And shouldn't us journalists be able to discuss them of either? Of course, of course. That's the number one uh, uh, purpose of this uh, asset declaration. And, and I have written elsewhere, I have written right through for the last five, six decades. Yeah. This fund should be, when it, whenever the bribery question, I said it should be available, declared first to the Attorney General, uh, sorry, uh, to the Auditor General, the Attorney General the elections commissioner and to the parliament and they each uh, in this category the sovereignty of the people is supreme to the judiciary there is no way that parliament can appoint a judge appoint uh, this thing uh, uh, auditor general or anything like that these people derive the power of the people mm. the sovereignty of the people lies in the three branches. And the executive also, there are excellent secretaries. And they themselves should be able to uh, exercise their right. And they say, no, no, I can't pay this. He, he says, did, did also, Mr. Ignaraj, I, I mean, I've seen this happen uh, in, in, say, the power sector. Um, you know, um, and in other sectors too, but um, uh, the exclusive uh, preserve of corruption is not only limited to politicians, but there are corrupt officials of course. Uh, as well. And Acting they hold things up. In fact, they fine tune it uh, in yes. such a way to confuse these politicians who, in any case, uh, quite a number of them are in cabinet. And I don't know whether they want to confuse the politicians. I think they're acting in tandem, acting in concert. That's that's the thing, because that combination is the one that is bad. We are the uh, legislature and branches of the executive are acting in tandem. And uh, on that note, let's uh, uh, let's go back. Let's go for a quick break. But before that, I'd like to tell you that tomorrow uh, at um, eight thirty, live on Newsline uh, TV One, 
is uh, Mr. Charita Herat, who of course heads COPE. And um, on that note, let's take a peek at this evening's headline news from the News First Primetime News Team. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali. Why did the chairman of the Ceylon Electricity Board resign? Is rice being sold for more than the maximum retail price? What will happen to public transport? When will the next fuel shipment arrive? <laughs> News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And welcome back to Newsline Live. We are in conversation with Mr. Casey Vignaraja, who is an investor, who is an economist, but he's also an average, decent citizen of Sri Lanka who's concerned for the economic, political and social well-being of our people, you, me and everybody else. Now then, uh, Ms. Vignaraja, you know, we're talking about asset recovery mm. and the it's uh, sort of uh, intertwined with the need for a new constitution. But how can you have a fit and proper constitu uh, constitution when some of these people who are involved in that process, in that decision-making process, are themselves inextricably linked to corruption and departures from due procedure. Right. That is why we said about the necessity, compulsory measure of fresh asset declaration now and sign an affidavit that they have not indulged in any criminal activity. That's absolutely important. That will, I think, eliminate and the punishment for breaching the affidavit must be very severe. In the customs, if you if you get caught, you are paid. You have to pay three times the fine. That is because the chances of uh, catching is very remote. So, but when you get caught, you pay three times the penalty. So, these people who are get caught breaching this affidavit must be stripped of the assets. There is no way because we are in a crisis. We normally don't like to hurt any others, any other citizen. That's why we have been patient. I have been patient for 10, 12 years advocating this, giving the good governance, as I said, good governance structures, that is GGS, good governance structures, and ATT, T, A3 T's, that is accountability, transparency, truth, and trust. These are the fundamentals of our society any society, but we were, we were at the top prior to all these jokers came in and the things. They are absolute jokers. But how, how is it that these jokers, uh, they must be slick talkers? Of course. Uh, because of course. how do they manage to convince the, uh, the sovereign <laughs> people yeah. to give them their vote? Exactly. That's where you are coming in, the media is coming in very well, educating the people. They are now getting a little, and that is, I think, the the real good thing about the uh, Aragalia, uh, Aragalia, no? Yes, the Aragalia, the, the, the protesters. Oh, yeah, fantastic! As I said, they formed a real sample of our total society. No communalism, no racialism, and of all religions, of all ages, everything. So they should form these jokers in parliament maybe there are very good people there at the Aragale. no i'm talking there are very good people in the parliament right. but there are so, so few but we must include them in the constitution uh, constitution assembly and there are good public officials we should include them in the public the bulk of it must come from the Aragale, the protesters and they are about 500 so they form if you, if the honourable judges want to think of a referendum, they can see multiply these uh, 500 people selected from the Aragalia 
into six times. Any statistician will tell you that that's a perfect way of getting the opinion. I did that for Fortune 500 companies all the time. And once I was honored for having the best no return basis of a top uh, Fortune 500 companies. How do you do it? You do it on the same basis. But why I became the best is I did normally, and then if there's a doubt, I would double the sample. It's so easy. And I, I feel so sorry that I didn't take to politics. I said, I'll do my job because I am good at this. I have to act the economic power. I thought the politicians will do the correct thing, but the politicians robbed all what we added to the economy. They stole purposely. Even these, even these uh, getting the people on queues is to weaken them. Why all these gas cylinders? Why can't they take them and deliver it to their house? Because in a ration card you know so much. Why can't they do that? The cars. This car is entitled to so much, uh, you think, uh, pet have uh, testified to the crimes, the tortures, everything done by these fellows. The murders, planned murders, journalists, he's at risk. There are so many other people who are at risk. Uh, this man, uh, Sri Raman, Lasanta Vikram, of all people, the fantastic man. Everyone loved to uh, read his papers. So, if we have to wait, please don't look at these small formalities and that formalities and what well, these fellows will come. I don't want to use profanities, but there were some people who came and absolute these things on their streets. They are slapping the people with the slippers, they are this thing, they are burning the effigies. There's no shame. No one wants to resign. Just resign and let the people do, not only in Sri Lanka, all over the world now, these protests are taking place. And they are not my henchmen or hens henchmen or anything. He has a nice word, henchayas. They are not, they are just honest citizens, Sri Lankan. I would even say that Sri Lankan name has been spoiled by these rascals in parliament. They brought it to the worst. Anyone, uh, someone said that they go to the uh, customs, they have to duck and they don't want to be Sri Lankan Christian. So it's fine, it has been a dirty word. Make it Lankans. In fact, I came back ha having a top Fortune 500 company, with many Kandara, doing very well because when people said they are bar Sri Lankans are barbarians, butchers, I said no, a few of them are. A lot of them are wonderful people. They are my people, my friends, you see, of every category. And they are gone. I can mention a lot of names, but no point. Mm. I think I have made the point. Thank you. And, and thank you very much uh, for, for being uh, so upfront and open, uh, Mr. Vignaraja. Uh, and it is, it's sad to, to hear you say it, but you know, sometimes uh, the medicine is bitter and uh, we have to hear uh, it the way it really is. And um, have you been to the Aragalia yourself? I know. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, you have? <laughs> because, you know, I have eyesight problem, walking problem, this yes. thing, but I was so, so encouraged. And then I said, I must. Well, I went with a help. I went to them and talked to them, and they were so, so this thing. They were, they were worried about themselves. Well, they didn't say, well, they said, Sir, we don't care. Whatever happens, we will stand up. That is the spirit. Will, 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 it, will it help if President Gotabe actually says, look guys, I resign? Yes. Would it help? Of course. That's number one. What, what, how will it help? In terms of what? In terms of the mindset of the politicians, of the politicians who have done wrong. I don't know how much and what he has done. But we definitely he has pr protected a lot of the people. He and he and his advisors.
But you know, Mr. Vignaraj, you you spoke about delivering gas uh, cylinders yeah, to the people. Yeah, of course. But you know, when give it we to me. Give it to me. I will do it. I have done so much of logistics support. But it's very Mr. easy. Vignaraj, you know, uh, back in uh, uh, two years ago, when when the uh, president decided to uh, uh, to bring the um, uh, to import uh, vaccinations, for example, the COVID nineteen. Uh, you know, Bangladesh bought these at ten dollars a piece. Uh, some weeks later, Sri Lanka bought them at fifteen dollars a piece. Okay. Um, there was an attempt to sort of uh, hide the the facts or saying yeah. some lousy excuse. But anyway, we paid Sri Lanka paid five dollars more um, times fifteen million doses. That's seventy five million dollars extra. Uh, our gas bill uh, at the time was um, just about thirty seven million dollars a month. So we could have actually given away, free of charge, or used that money to do that. Exactly. Why, why is it that Sri Lanka never fails to miss an opportunity? <laughs> you, you have put it right in a way. You see, of course, I don't like giving anything free. No. Because people must, how much, but they must be related to their people and their needs. In a, in a uh, staggered basis, that is fine. But, as you rightly said, in a sarcastic manner, we fail to get any opportunity. No, we always fail to miss the opportunity. We never fail. We, miss the we al always, you know, we, we very well miss the opportunity. But, Mr. Vigranja, you know, we talk and we discuss, but what on earth needs these people to realize the social distress of the sovereign people of our country. What is it? What do we have to do? The Aragale, they had some success, some people resigned and so on. But what do they have to do? How often must we say this on air? You know, to the point almost of boredom. Yeah, yes, but, but we must persist. There's we no must persist. We, we can must never give up. We can never give up. You remember what Obama achieved. We can. And that is the spirit of these young people who are there. Sri young Lanka can. Can, of course we can. Not Sri Lanka. 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 Lanka can. Lankans can. Sri Lanka has become a dirty word. Dirty word by these people's act actions. So much of horror, horror. All the international IMF, uh, ADB, World Bank, they must first see that these robbed dollars can be uh, account for them. Ask them to accountability. They, accountability. they seem to forget things. You know, I've just remembered uh, in the last few seconds, Sri Lanka cricket. Our cricket has done so much uh, in terms of our branding, brand Sri Lanka, apart from their cricketing prowess and all that. But, you know, one payment has gone to a country that probably doesn't know what a cricket bat is. Some <laughs> account in Mexico. Where's, where's the end result? You know, uh, exactly millions right. and millions and millions of rupees have been spent on legal fees by Sri Lanka cricket. Where is there one case where we've come to an absolute legal end to that case? Never. <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic. Because this is the curse. That's why I said Sri Lanka is down in the dumps, to be very polite. It has been, the name has been raised. That is why. Lankan cricket is good, but I don't want Sri Lankan cricket, in my personal opinion. But many people say the same thing, right? Ceylon, Ceylon tea still holds. And Lankan tea can come later. But there's nothing wrong in adopting a brand which we have established over the centuries. And that's absolutely important. So there's no compromise. We have to go after the robbed dollars, get these fellows, and robbed assets. There's so much of palaces and hotels and all that in uh, different countries, different areas. We must Thank you, uh, Mr. K.C. Vigaraja, decent citizen of Sri Lanka. <laughs> Thank you. It's now time for the prime time news from News Thank First. You. Take care, and as always, God bless you all.